And let's bring up our next storyteller, Bettina. Hello, Evanston. Um, can you guys all hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. So every immigrant story also has the story of the first generation. And that's what I am. And first generation's that generation that deals with the old values and learning how to melt into the new place. And inevitably, some of those values crash. And for me, I knew from a very young age that I was going to marry a white guy. <laughs> and I don't know how I knew this. I think I have this gift from my mother. She has flashes of the future. She has intuitions about things. I, too, am plagued with this because I never know which of them are right and which of them are just my crazy brain just going off. So when I first dreamt of my husband, I wasn't surprised at all because my mother had dreamt of my father. And so to me, it's like, obviously, I would also do the same thing. And in her dream, um, she dreamt that it was her wedding day, and she was very tired. She couldn't see her husband's face. Um, her sister was not happy with the marriage because the man that my mom was going to marry was from the same village that her husband was from. And she wasn't happy with that, and she refused to go to the wedding. And for the most part, all of this came to pass. Um, she didn't go to the wedding because her daughter, my cousin, was sick. But the same village, she was upset, all of that happened. So in my dream, my husband and I are walking through the halls of a museum. And we come into a room where the Virgin Mary is reclining upon a divan. And it's a statue. And this statue comes to life and talks to me. And I wake up. And the twist is that my husband is white. And it's like, oh my god, I knew it. I knew I was going to marry a white guy. The dream, I got the dream. She had the dream. I got to tell my mom right now. Now, my therapist says I'm hyper-responsible. And at this point, I'm 16 years old, and the blessed event isn't going to take place for another 11 years. But I am going to deal with this today. So I go downstairs. My mom and my cousin, who's living with us at that time, and my brother and sister are all downstairs and having breakfast. And I go, and I tell them my dream. And there is the longest pause in history. And they're staring at me. My mom and cousin stare at each other. And I am freaking out, because I don't know what does this mean. Like, am I going to be grounded? Are they going to send me to India for the rest of my life? Like, what is happening right now? <laughs> and my mom goes to me, and she goes, you dreamed of the Virgin Mary? Because contrary to what I look like, we are a family of devout Catholics. And that is all that my family picked up on, was that the Virgin Mary spoke to me. And I was like, oh. That's not the point of my story. OK, so I could have used that opportunity to tell my mom, like, no, 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 that, that, didn't, that wasn't really the Virgin Mary. Yes, that was the Virgin Mary, but that like, wasn't the actual, that wasn't a vision. But instead, I was like, yeah, you're right. She, I should probably try to remember what she said. OK, so to, then you know, her, my mom and my cousin are like, look, when she comes to you tonight, you got to pay attention. You can't just like, not listen to the Virgin Mary. It's like, OK. And now it's like, oh my god, this, she missed the point of my story. And I was too scared to tell her. And so clearly the next night, I did not dream of the Virgin Mary. And you know, my mom just thought I was incompetent and whatever. And so the matter laid to rest. Now, cut too many years later, I've met my husband. And I am determined to tell my mom about this and be honest and above board, because again, hyper responsible. And so I do this in the most mature way possible. I'm in her room. We're laying in our bed, talking and laughing. And I decide this is the moment. So I take the sheets and I cover my face. <laughs> I am 22 by this point. I have graduated college. I have a degree, but this is how I'm handling it. Sheet is over my face. Mom, I have a boyfriend. Again, another long pause. Oh, did he ask you on a date? <laughs> that is not my mom's accent, but I hope you understand that if a white woman asked that question to her daughter, it would be like, Oh, did he ask you on a date? It's a request for information. My mom is mocking me. She thinks this is the dumbest thing she's ever heard. 
And it really threw me off because actually I had asked him out. It's like, am I going to get more in trouble if I tell her that? So yeah, he asked me on a date, mom. It's my boyfriend. And to her credit, she was so mad at me. She was so ticked off about this whole thing. But she didn't let on at all. She calmly listened to the whole thing, met him, assumed it was a fling that would go away, and just decided to wait it out. And what ended up happening is that they both actually won each other over. They got to know each other, not as the stereotypes that present their ugly heads in a really tough situation, but they got to know each other as people. And when it came time to get engaged, my husband did go and get you know, her approval. And she was happy to have him as a son-in-law. And we got married, and we have kids, and she is very happy. And it, was, it is a beautiful example of how the older generation, the first generation, it's about bridging those differences instead of building more walls and keeping each other out. Thank you.